My name is Basil Adra from Safariyata in the Southern West Bank. I am a local journalist and activist. Uh, almost every day I take my camera and uh, I follow what's going on in the field in the area of Masafariyata. What's the story? The story of Masafariyata is a forcible transfer and land theft. At the 4th of May of this year, the Israeli, the Israeli occupation court and what they call it the Israeli High Court of Justice gave the army, the Israeli army, the green light to forcibly uh, evacuate a residents of eight Palestinian villages of Masafir Yatta. Uh, this is a brutal tool and it's a lie that they declare our land uh, where we've been living for centuries here in the area as a firing zone. <laughs> There are uh, communities which is not in the firing zone or not in the active firing zone as they call it. In these villages, for example, they are continuing by demolition also homes and preventing people to get built permissions or a water supply or electricity or to build a, a paved road and as well uh, there the people most get like harassed by the Israeli settlers on the daily basis. Uh, harassed in the fields, harassed and going, uh, moving between the, the Palestinian communities. Army come and raid our villages like my village, my home, uh, got raids since February until today at least seven times at, at night. The army raids uh, during the nights into our homes has clearly uh, created a fear situation. My two young sisters, who is uh, seven and eight, Tasneem and Asinat, are really uh, uh, facing hard time and afraid going uh, to bed at night. Uh, the soldiers, when they raid our home, they throw stun grenades in front of our door. Uh, violently detain my father and my, sit my sisters have watched and witnessed that. My first memory from uh, witnessing a uh, soldier's attack or settler's violence, it's I remember when I was seven years old and in that age, the Israeli soldiers raiding our homes during the night and violently taking us and forced us to move uh, out from the home me, my mother, my siblings, my father as well, our neighbors in the village, uh, just the soldiers go home by home, taking everyone outside, making us gather in a circle uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the center of the village and start, the soldiers will start threatening uh, the adults like our parents. At that time, for example, I was uh, really afraid of sleeping at night and mostly I would sleep with my shoes because uh, when the soldiers come at night, uh, they grab us without uh, giving us a time even to wear, uh, even to give me a time like to wear my shoes. So I would, uh, I remember very well uh, me walking on a dirt road, not paved uh, inside the village and very cold because they come, the soldiers come after midnight. When I was nine years old, uh, I watched and seen uh, six Israeli soldiers uh, brutally beating my father because he was in the field with our flocks uh, grazing it uh, around my village. Uh, but one settler claimed that the land belonged to him, so he ordered the soldiers to chase my father away. And when my father refused to go away, the soldiers uh, start beating him brutally violently taking him inside the military jeep and arrest him. It was it create a big fear uh, inside me and make me understand that I am living in a situation it's unnormal and we're facing this monster of the occupation from the settlers and uh, the soldiers. It continued until today, until uh, exactly March 2020, I was attacked and beaten by also four soldiers in the same field where my father was because I was documenting uh, these soldiers chasing another shepherd from that field. Oh, 
occupation army roles in this in this area is very clear is to protect settlers and to allow them do uh, what they want it's not that a group of extremist settlers want to do attacks but they are invested and they are supported by the Israeli army and the Israeli authority to commit this against us when a settler, settler a group of settlers come to attack our village backed with the soldiers who come with them from the outpost until our village and allow them to attack us. These are the same soldiers who come with a bulldozer when the bulldozer come to bulldozer our homes. Since I grew up, I witnessed and documented hundreds of these demolitions going on in this area, and it's the most heartbreaking for, for myself. I can feel that everyone living in fear at that moment and worried about his home. It's my home, it's my bathroom, it's the school of my village, uh, it's it's the water pipe that coming to, to supply water to my home. It's my solar panel. There I stand, I document, I see the tears of the children, the mothers, the people around them also cry because they know that they have the same thing gonna happen to them.